first video. I don't care how you got here, whether it was a random click, a hashtag, some social media posts. I don't care. I just want to say, welcome to my channel. And you could not have picked a better day to join in. Today I have a very special announcement that is tied in with a super faith-filled testimony that I am truly hoping will inspire you. And y'all, I am rocking this middle part today and I'm kind of feeling myself. Like, I typically don't like middle parts, so I'm just, I'm feeling this today. Y'all feeling this today? Anyways, baby, let's stay focused. So, this is week seven or eight of uploads. I cannot believe we've been going eight straight weeks. And also, can I just say, shout out to reaching 100. I never celebrated that, so let's just take a moment. <laughs> And celebrate! Thank you that over 100 of you, I think like 135 of you at this point, are following the journey. And I'm so grateful to have you on board. I'm really hoping that my life will make some kind of impact on you, whether it's through silly videos or like today when I share my testimony. So today, what are we talking about today, baby? What is this announcement? What the heck is going on? Well, let me just start and give you a little bit of background, okay? So, I was born and raised in Akron, Ohio. All of my family still lives there. Well, technically, my older brother lives in Cleveland. But, for the most part, my family is from Akron, lived in Akron. I'm from Akron. Akron is the place to be. Shout out to LeBron James. Yes, we ride his tail. We don't care. 330. Y'all sick of me yet? Okay. <laughs> um, but right now, I live in Columbus, Ohio. But it's a funny story of kind of how I got here. First of all, I want to give the disclaimer that I'm starting from a level of knowledge that other people may not have if you missed out on that first testimony that I shared. Because it was a journey to even come across the decision of transferring to Ohio State, how that all worked out. It was remarkable. That testimony reached 2,300 people and changed not only my life, but so many people's lives that are attached to mine or people that just ran across the video and I got so many messages of how God moved through that testimony to impact other people's lives. So my point is I would pause the video here, click the link in my description box where I have the link to the live. Um, it should be public on Facebook because I've shared it on my blog before. So you should be able to access it even if we're not Facebook friends. Go watch that testimony first and then jump back right here at this moment, save your spot and watch the rest and things will make a whole lot more sense. So I did four years for undergrad at Indiana University Bloomington, that was back in 2012, graduated in May of 2016, and I then moved on to graduate school. I started out at um, Loyola University Chicago, and basically how most school site programs are set up. So there are three years total. After the first year, you get a master's degree. And then the second year, you do practicum experience and take classes. And then that third year, you have a full-time internship. And then you take a test and you get licensed and you're out there. So three years in and out. I've been telling everybody I'm getting the EDS degree. I finished up the second year this year. And the plan was next year I'm going on internship and then I'll get my license and be done and be out in the school practicing as a school psychologist. Well, flipping the script again on you guys because you're probably just like, we can't keep up with you, girl. Yeah, flipping the script again and sharing with you all today that I've recently made the decision to switch to the PhD track and I, I can't process it. Like, I can process it better now than I was able to before. So let me just give you the testimony behind this decision. I was sure that I was getting an EDS degree. Everybody I told, I'm getting EDS. People would ask me, oh, are you there for your PhD? I'm like, no, I'm getting EDS, you know, three years in and out. And I'm telling y'all, I was dead set. Um, <laughs> let me tell you how committed I was. So, started with TAs and then mentors and then faculty. And it just seemed like this snowball effect of all of these people asking me, have I considered a PhD? And this is while I was still in Chicago. And I was like, uh, no. Now I have to come up with like all these excuses and reasons why I'm not doing PhD. So I had all the reasons, y'all. Um, and some of them were very legit. Like, don't get me wrong. I think they were all very legit. Mainly, it was financial decision. I'm like, who's paying for a PhD? <laughs> okay. If y'all are anything like me, and if you're still in college after six years, let me tell you, 
okay? This is not cheap, okay? I don't want y'all to think, I'm not out here living no fancy life, okay? I'm watching people I graduated with in cars, with houses, and salaries, and making investments, and I'm over here like, yeah, I'm just hoping I can get some grilled cheese for dinner. You feel me? Like, so financial was really it. Like, who, who's paying for that? Who's paying for my expenses? For me to do that i'm in debt enough already i can't like i can't financially can't do it and then i was concerned about burnout you know six years of college back to back sometimes people take breaks in between you know so would have taken a break right after high school or right after undergrad before getting a master's i did all of that back to back to back to back to back and i was just like i'm burned out like i just how am I going to write a dissertation when I'm like sick of looking at the computer screen 99% of the time these days? Like, it just wouldn't make sense to stay, right? And then I was just like, you know, telling people like, well, I just, I, I want to be a school psych, you know, and I can do that with the EDS. And so there it is. And I knew when saying those very words that I had deeper desire, these other, you know, larger systems that I wanted to affect. I knew I had that passion down inside of me. But, you know, it was so much easier to just say, well, I just want to be a school psych and so I'm just going to do this and get my little license and go about my way. And, you know, if I end up doing any of that later, I'll figure it out after the fact. But those conversations honestly are part of the story because they planted a seed even though i was saying one thing with my mouth to them on the inside i was having this like cognitive dissonance about this decision i had a conversation with my mentor right before i left chicago and she asked me one more time would you do phd and i told her absolutely not it's not for me i want to get out I want to be done and move on with my life and make a salary and etc etc and so she let it go she was like i'll support you no matter what but you know i it, it's your decision so that's that so i went to ohio state thinking great won't nobody bother me about that anymore it's a whole new scene whole new setup i'm in the clear right wrong wrong okay and domino effect same thing that happened in chicago one person mentioned it and then a mentor mentioned it, and then faculty mentioned it, and then, you know, a, a professor after a presentation will mention it, like, hey, have you thought about it? And then they started talking to each other. So it's almost worse, because <laughs> here they're all talking to each other. It's just like, it's a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy. What do you people want from me? So like, everybody was just kind of dropping these nuggets, and I was just like, great. And on the inside, I had been considering it. But I told my family, I told my best friends, if I come to you and I say I'm doing PhD, tell me no. Tell me no, remind me of how I feel right now at midnight typing this paper when I could be in the bed or spend my weekends doing homework. Like remind me of that and tell me no. Tell me no, remind me of my no. So then December, this past December comes, I get invited to kind of like almost an orientation of the PhD program. I realized that I had so many misconceptions about this program. I had made PhD out to be this big, like scary, monstrous thing with numbers only. I had all the reasons y'all, like I, I have a practitioner focus, which is valid. But it was just like, I won't be able to do this, I won't be in the I mean, I had all these reasons, right? And then I go sit in this orientation and they're basically like telling me all this stuff. And in my head, I'm like, oh, 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 interesting. So basically everything I thought this program was, it's not. Cool, good to know. Well, dang, now I'm really back at square one of like, okay, am I really considering this? Because now I'm hearing about all these opportunities and experiences that line right up with what I want to do in the future and where I really think my destiny is headed and so it was like oh no so I literally left that like with like the emoji with the brain explosion that was me leaving that orientation and I think they could tell on my face like so many of them were you know saying like how do you feel whatever you know go home and think about it so I had all of winter break to think about it. So throughout all of winter break, I looked for God to be speaking through people, through, I mean, through anything, through sermons, through just random everyday occurrences, through the TV. I'm like, Lord, help me. Cause if I leave it to me, 
my fear is going to make sure that I don't move forward with it. And just like the dope guy that he is, he used so many different mediums to speak to me. I think the scariest thing is that I heard, I'm a venture to say five to eight sermons throughout winter break that were not even all in the same city, not all the same church, not all the same pastor. I mean, they were each somebody different. And even in different states, like I was in Arkansas for a conference and it felt like from the first sermon to the last one that I heard just after New Year's, that these preachers were all building on each other. It was like they had a meeting behind closed doors and was like, okay, so there's this girl named Gaby. Okay, and God is trying to say a few things to her. So I'm gonna start here and then you finish over there. And that's how we got to work it. And so literally with every sermon, I had like these goosebumps of like, oh my, oh, oh. You know those sermons where it's just like, you can insert my name in the sermon. I was just like, Lord, and each time I would just be like, Lord, for real? It was that final one where I think the epiphany happened. And I really think the epiphany in that sermon was that fear and doubt were the only things holding me back from this PhD. When I strip away all those other excuses, why am I not going to do this? Fear and doubt. I had convinced myself that I was not capable. And at this very moment, God brought something very specific to mind. And as it was unraveling in my head, I was just like, wow. And I shared this on the Facebook post today, but in case you haven't seen it, God brought to mind my decision to run for senior class president my junior year and how that happened. And so basically it was a conversation with somebody probably a, a year before that or maybe a semester before that who actually said like, you should run for senior class president. Like, have you ever thought about that? And I laughed. Like, I remember audibly laughing at that person. Like, psh, psh, no, absolutely not. Like, that's crazy. Why would I do that? Who would vote for me? For what? You know, like just all the excuses, right? Like literally was so dead set. Guess who ended up running for senior class president in April 2011? And then guess who, throughout senior year, won several awards for leadership, led my class to graduation, and blew my own mind? Like, me. And so it was like, look how doubt ended up as success, an overwhelming blessing that you, you didn't even see coming. Then God told me about IU, he brought IU to mind. And like I said, my hometown is Akron, Ohio, and I made this crazy decision at the last minute. Oh yeah, I'm going to apply for Indiana University for their top psychology program, and I'm going to go there and live there for four years, not knowing anyone, not a soul. And mom and dad, you've never even heard of this place, but here we go. It made no sense. And when I got there, I remember texting people like, I don't have friends, like, just pray for me. <laughs> it's just hard. Pray for me. I was six hours away from home. I'm like... This is terrible. It was even hard to see myself finishing with a college degree. Like it just felt so large and like I would never tackle this iceberg in my way. Y'all again, guess who in May of 2016 graduated with two degrees had, I mean, just crazy opportunity. My undergrad experience, when I still think about it, it just, it doesn't make sense. Won so many awards by my senior year that were just honoring the work that I put in. Work that I didn't think I was capable of. Work that I never saw coming. Again, doubt and fear moving into overwhelming, exceeding, abundant blessing. And the last one that got brought to mind was with AKA, I remember the fall of my sophomore year, a few of my sisters approached me about considering running for president. And again, I laughed. Like I was, no, like why would I do that? What, what I don't know thank you like I saw the work that my sister was putting in who was currently the president and I was just like I'm trying to graduate I'm just like that's not even possible for me like who would listen to me I was the youngest well second youngest on my line so everybody is grown in my chapter like they all older than me they're not gonna listen to me I was just like no I no like no well, guess who in April 2014 was elected as president of Top Chapter? Guess who, over the next year and a half, witnessed the chapter winning 27 plus awards, held multiple leadership roles from regionals to international. So again, it was doubt and fear ending up 
being this overwhelming success and abundant blessing that I could have never seen coming for myself. So in that moment, I got checked so hard, y'all. Like, so hard. And from that moment forward, I knew exactly what I had to do. But guess what? I decided to give God an ultimatum. You're probably already laughing at me like, girl, what did you think? giving God an ultimatum. Yeah, I gave him an ultimatum and I said, if I'm supposed to be doing this, that it would be paid for. So I started looking for opportunities for funding. By the time I made the decision, I had missed several deadlines um, for graduate assistant positions, which is the main way to get tuition funded. You know, you work for this for a department, they pay your tuition, give you a stipend. So I was already like, doubtful. Just, mm, okay, I'll see how this is going to work out. Well then, two random opportunities came out of nowhere that I, I wasn't expecting, but thank God that they that they came and I jumped on them, I interviewed, I did what I was supposed to do, and one of them offered me a position. So I was excited, but I interviewed for the other one first and really felt a strong connection to that one, really felt like it was the best fit, really felt like that's where I could have had my influence the interview went great, they were introducing me to everyone, they were talking me up, like it just felt like yes, yes, like that's the one. And so the one that offered me the position, on the other hand, kind of gave me like an expiration date to make my decision. Rightfully so, rightfully so, but it was a quick expiration date. And so I had to make a decision. Was I going to hold out and wait for the other one? Or was I going to let the one that gave me the position, offer me the position, go? And a lot of you are probably like, that's a simple answer. Go with the sure thing. Yeah, that seems like the simple the simple answer. But at the time, I, I really was so sure that the other one was the opportunity that was supposed to be for me. And I felt like God was pushing me toward the cliff and saying, okay, are you gonna jump? Are you gonna actually trust me? Or do you only trust me enough to do what you can see? Mm. That was good. That just, that just blow it. Do you only trust me enough that you only believe that I'll do what you can see, not what you can't see? And the very definition of faith is believing in what we can't see. So I, you know, I always check, I'm, I'm not irresponsible out here. I'm not just out here doing crazy stuff for no reason. So I checked with everybody. I checked with my mom, who is really my spiritual advisor. And the, the person that I kind of bounce these things off of, I asked her, I asked my dad, I asked my mentors, I asked my advisor, I asked faculty, I asked mentor. I mean, I asked everyone. I ran the scenario by them. And they were like, hey, I think you need to take the leap. The other one had just made it so plain as day. I mean, they basically said you have the position without saying it. I mean, they just sold me the dream. So I was so sure, like I was just so sure. So I turned down the one that made me the offer. Yep, the one that offered to pay my tuition and give me a stipend every month and et cetera for another position that would do the same thing, but I felt would be a better fit. Well. Last Monday, I found out that I did not receive the position. That the one that they had sold me the dream for and had me ever so confident to turn down a whole other position that was willing and ready to pay for me. Yeah. Yep. They turned me down and it was heavy for me to process. Like, I was just so sure that this position was the... This is why you had to go through a hell of a year in 2017. Like, I, I see everything coming together. Like, I see you showing me my why. And so to be rejected was just like, especially after having been sold the dream and got me out here telling everybody about my faith move and everything. Like, y'all, I was embarrassed. Like, embarrassed is the word that I think trumps every other thing I was feeling. Like, Lord, how do I explain it? This was supposed to be me sharing the testimony of how I decided PhD and then telling you this amazing testimony about how these random opportunities came when it looked like there was no way and how everything panned out and how they wanted me and then offered me the position. Like, I had it set. So as I'm reading this email, I'm just like, what? Like, Lord, what? Like, 
I thought we were on the same page here, you know, like I, th I thought we were making the same moves. I thought we were lined up mentally. And then of course the enemy loves to get all in your head and add to like add insult to injury. And so then it became thoughts of like, why am I even still in college? Like why, why am I here? Like all of this hard work doing everything that everybody said you're supposed to do. And it felt like it wasn't paying off. Like, I don't understand. And what's crazy is I didn't do all these things for, you know, even the awards are honors. I, did, I didn't do it for somebody to then want to pay for my schooling. But you just assume that you do these things right and it gets honored in this way. That's how they sell the college experience is that you do X, Y, Z and you won't have to worry about these things later on down the road. And that just hasn't been my, my testimony. And so I was so upset. I mean, I was crushed. I was fighting every day to overcome those feelings and to still trust God and not be mad at God and not, you know, be upset with God or question God. But it got to about Thursday. Because I had gotten just news after news last week that other opportunities, grants, and things like that were just all falling through. And I was like, so everything that was giving me confidence in moving forward with PhD is knocked out the door. What does this mean? Does it mean I'm not supposed to go forward with PhD? Like, what does this mean? Why would, Why did my hopes have to get up? How do you explain this, Lord? What's the purpose in this, Lord? Like, I was just, I got to a point where I was like, I had to be real with God. And I had to get those things off of my spirit because they were, they were weighing me down. So thank God in those moments for faith-filled family and friends, mentors, advisors, people who love you and are in your corner because otherwise I would not have made it out of last week. I just, I was, it was such a dark place for me and I couldn't justify why God even saw fit that I would have to go through that situation. But I had people pointing me back to the word and pointing me back to God, allowing me to feel but reminding me of who God is, who we serve, how the enemy would love to use this moment, and continuously pouring scripture like down my throat. Even when I couldn't do it myself, they stood in the gap for that. And so I was able to find light again. It was like after that big emotion on Thursday, Friday was like, all right, here we go. We're about to put one foot in front of the other and and keep moving and, and see what God is going to do because he's obviously not going to leave me. He didn't bring me along this journey this far and all those miracles and all those, I mean, just the ways he's, he's moved and shaped my life in amazing ways and leading the destiny just to leave me in this moment. But then I still had this burden on my heart of like, okay, Lord, so what, what, what do I tell people? Like, how do I share this story when it's not picture perfect like it didn't turn out right like so what what am i supposed to share should i even still share and he laid on my heart shared it anyway and i actually had a best one of my best friends confirm that i should share it anyway i mean she literally as i'm telling her yeah i don't think i'm gonna talk about it i think i'm just gonna you know tell them i'm doing my phd and move on and she was like i think you should share it anyway and she even said i think it's more powerful sometimes to share in the midst of our testimony because a lot of times we want to present these perfect testimonies we want to believe that the life of christians or believers we want to believe that it's this picture perfect thing and that once you give your life to god you don't have trials and if you're a good person if you do good things and, and try to do everything right then bad things won't happen to you that you somehow become you know shielded from just the fact that we live in a in a tough world that we live and interact with people who don't always think like us or lead with their heart in the same way that we would and so instead of looking at God like some genie or something we should be considering the fact that like thank God for God <laughs> you know that we th this world is what it is it's not a utopia but we have a God that we can still look to for hope that you know who shares in his word in Jeremiah 29 11 that he has plans for us that he has a destiny for us 
who gives us things to rely on in those tough situations. We still experience a real world, a real tough world. We are living in this world and experiencing it like everyone else. So we have security in knowing that God said that he will work all things, all things, good, bad, and ugly, together for our good. Romans 8, 28. We have a God who says in Psalm 55, 22, that we should be casting our cares on him because he cares for us. Like we have that security blanket. We have that peace in the midst of storm. We have that in Jesus Christ. That's the only difference. And once we have that perspective and start relying and trusting in God's word and trying to move away from relying on our own understanding and trying to make sense of it for ourselves and instead just focusing our eyes on him and watch him make our path straight. Literally. Like our focus should only be on him. It should never be on those trials and tribulations because we have the security of his word and knowing knowing that he's going to come through but also remembering all the times that he came through in the past in such strategic ways being able to trust and know that his word is true once i shifted my perspective from something like this should have never happened to me to i live in a sucky world this could have happened to anybody good bad and different and instead, I at least have the security of knowing that God is going to use any situation for my good. Once I had that perspective and was able to kind of grasp that after, after getting my emotions out and I was able to hold on to that a little bit, I started to see the light. And so here I am in the middle of my testimony. I believe that my faith has been increased by this situation. If I get nothing else out of what happened, that knowing that my faith has increased and that my trust is, has increased to truly believe and rely on God even more to see him bring my destiny to pass, that's all I need. And I want to make sure I acknowledge y'all like the real in this that yes my feelings were hurt absolutely like i i thought this was unfair absolutely i don't want you to think i'm being overly positive but i also want you to hear me say that you know these nuggets that kind of were dropped along the way are what helped me to get to a better place particularly one thing that was brought to mind is the fact that god sees beyond all right now and i'm so grateful for that god sees beyond this moment but not only that, it's not that when we grieve, he's just sitting up in heaven like, ah, shut up, all them tears, like, I already see, it's gonna get better, so you just wait, just chill out, calm down. No, we have a God that I believe who grieves with us, who shares that pain with us, who shares the reality that we live in a sucky world and sucky stuff happens. I believe he grieves with us and comforts us in those moments. But also, he has this, this full joy because he can see Man, this is temporary. Man, you, you have no idea the amazing blessings. Eyes have not seen and ears have heard all of the amazing, amazing things that are going to unfold in the future. So I know faith can be a bit of a taboo subject at our age, but I want to push you that if there's some area that you're supposed to be stepping out on faith and taking a leap and you feel led to do so, do it. I know if you're anything like me, we sell ourselves short. I mean, people will compliment me sometimes on things and I'm always grateful and I receive it on the outside, but nine times out of 10 on the inside, I'm like, where did they see that at? Or like, me? What? So it's almost like, I can't accept or can't even comprehend that people are already seeing things in me that I don't necessarily see in myself. We sell ourselves short. We think we are not capable or not smart enough. Or I can't do that. Or I'm not creative enough. I'm not this. I'm not that. No, 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 no. It's such a possibility that your faith move is the thing that's standing in between you and your destiny. The only thing that's holding you back is you, your fear, your doubt. So I feel very confident in saying that this is only part one of the testimony. But there will be a part two that God will at the very least turn this entire situation out for good. Not only that, but honor my faith leap. And honor even my faith leap to, to even decide to move to PhD. That this is in line with the destiny that God has prepared for me. And that he will just show himself strong over the next three years. So all that to say that in May of 2021, I, Gabriel, 
will be walking the stage of the Ohio State University in my home state of Ohio to gather my PhD, my doctoral degree in school psychology. And y'all, I think the most important thing I need to say here is that this will not be my degree, this will be our degree. Okay, because we're celebrating now, but this is going to be a challenging journey. I mean, school thus far has already been challenging, but the level is only going to increase in order to obtain this degree. And so I'm believing and hoping that you all will continue to encourage, to pray for me, to check in, to just be what you've been to me already over these last six years and beyond. Um, I'm really believing for that because like I said, when we celebrate at the end, oh, it's gonna be our degree, okay? I know that it takes a village. I never, never believed I would see this moment, see this happening in my life, see PhD as a reality. But you know what they say, if you can see your dreams, they're not big enough. So I think we're going to wrap it up here. Before I leave, I just want to once again encourage you to join me on this crazy stupid faith journey and to take those leaps where you need to take them and watch that work. And even if your testimony isn't perfect, and even if you're still in the middle of your testimony, God is still working. If you feel comfortable enough to share with me how God may have spoken through me and used this testimony to reach you or to meet you at some point in your life, please feel free to comment below. If not, if you don't feel comfortable expressing that in public, I would still want to know because y'all, that encourages me and reminds me that God is using these situations to make a difference. So please find some way to reach me, whether that's DMs on Instagram at MissMS underscore GCH, whether that's Facebook message, whether that's if you have my number, send me a text, whatever it takes, I would love to hear how God used this testimony to reach you. And ultimately, make sure you subscribe, one, so that you can see more videos, but two, so that when part two of this testimony drops, we can all just shout together. You know what, matter of fact, let's just go ahead and shout in advance. in advance okay Whew. okay but remember why am i still trying to catch my breath <laughs> let me get out of here thank y'all so much for watching please keep me in your prayers these next upcoming weeks and just overall the next three years <laughs> i love y'all and i will catch you in the next video bye